John, welcome. Uh, the expectation, good, thank you. The expectations Thanks. for the meeting were very low. I think that is a fair statement. Okay, first meeting, obviously between the two on equal terms since since the pandemic. What's your takeaway from what we have learned about the meeting? Well, first of all, the expectations were low because they were set low by the parties. And I think what we should read from this meeting is two old pros whose teams know how to pull off a good meeting. They had a number of lower level meetings beforehand. They had contacts between the ambassadors, between Kerry and his counterpart in uh, Egypt. And uh, you got to admit, President Biden is a thousand years old, but he did five summit meetings and a meeting with Xi in one week, and he won the Senate. So this, this guy's a this guy's a warrior. So good. The meeting was actually much better than uh, than I would have or many people would have expected. Yeah, and and I think may, maybe the best takeaway, John, is that there was a meeting. The, the fact exactly. that the, the fact that you're talking talking is good. Absolutely. And the best thing about this meeting is that they arranged for lower level people to meet afterwards. That's really important because presidents don't have a lot of time to get to, uh, to get to visit with each other. You need that knitting together of the teams to do that. You know, uh, Blinken is going to go to China uh, shortly. Uh, Yellen is going to meet with Yi Gong later this week on, on COVID restrictions and some other economic matters. There was a meeting of the two ambassadors. Uh, there's a, a huge progress there. And it really opened up after the Chinese political meeting shut down, which means she has a little more room to maneuver politically than he did before. It, it almost looks like President Xi is smiling. As, I've never seen him smile before. And the truth is, I don't know him personally. I know the other guys, but not, not him. But he is a legitimate tough guy. My wife calls him scary communists. They never smile in a meeting. But these two guys are getting along. And importantly for Xi, they look like their peers. That's been a big sticking point for the Chinese and all that, where you have equal billing on these uh, uh, on these meetings. It's very, very important. Yeah, and if you read about uh, President Xi's history, he had a tough upbringing. I mean, he was not treated, let's call it, with uh, love and kindness, which probably explains some of his some of his toughness there. We're going to bring Kalis Taoshin in just. One second, but John, overseeing all of this or underlying it, whatever you want to say, is that China is building like an aircraft carrier every six months. I mean, the, <laughs> yeah. the, the Taiwan issue is a is a massive deal. W what's the next steps on that? And what is clearly China arming itself in an unprecedented modern way? Absolutely. Well, if you compare the dollars, the U.S. spends a lot more than China still. But China is rapidly building up a military and now has a huge navy. They're serious about Taiwan, but they have always been patient. And the interesting thing from this meeting is it's looking like from both Biden and Xi that they're slowing down the timetable and making it less tense, which is really important. You know, almost all of the fancy semiconductors in the world come out of Taiwan. And we really need that place to stay together. So an invasion won't work, and uh, we've got to find a way to, uh, to maneuver that. What they didn't talk about, which is really important, is the U.S. restrictions on both semi-equipment companies, like ASML, yeah. uh, and, uh, and uh, the, 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 the modern chips that they are not able to export either. That's highly important for China's uh, uh, growth in the future. But the best for China's growth is the, is the loosening up of the COVID restrictions and a little bit of help for the property sector.